Hello everyone. So in this video, I will explain how to use virtual lab to perform practicals in solid mechanics. First of all, I copied the link of this virtual lab. So we need to paste this link in Google. Or you can search for virtual lab also. I already have link, so I can uh, copy that link. Once you copy this link, that is uh, nltk.vlabs.ac.in, this window will appear. This window will open. Now you can see here, this is a strength of material lab, okay, virtual lab basically. And there is list of experiments. So you can, once you click on list of experiments, this uh, window will open. This many experiments we can perform by using this lab. Out of this, uh, as per our syllabus, you can see here, first six experiments are already we perform using UTM. But by using time availability for your examination, we can perform these experiments by using virtual lab. So we can perform any experiment out of these six first six experiments. So what are these experiments? First, tension test for ductile material, then tension test for composite material, compression test, shear test, bending test, and torsion test. You can check in this virtual lab here also, all these tests are there. So we can see here direct shear test on mild steel, direct shear test on timber. Direct shear test on mild. So we can perform either mild steel rod or mild steel plate. So this is shear test experiment you can perform. Then we already performed experiment on compression test. So we can perform compression test for ductile as well as bitter material. Mild steel is a ductile material, cast iron is a bitter material. So we are going to perform it on a bitter material. So compression test on a cast iron. Then we done bending test and mild steel. Then perform torsion test. So likewise, all tests we perform on UTM that we can perform here. So six experiments that we can, uh, that already be done using UTM, we can do with the, this lab. So let's, as a sample experiment, I will show you a tensile test of a mild steel. So you have to select any experiment that you have to perform. Just click on this uh, link here. Once you open this, uh, once you click that link, then you can see aim of the experiment. So aim of the experiment is to study mechanical properties of mild steel specimen under a tension load. Then you can check theory of this experiment. You can read this theory. All theory regarding tensile test is given here. So we can read this theory. Already we discussed in experiment. So no need to discuss this theory here. Then we have to read a procedure, step-by-step -step procedure also given how we can perform this practical. You can go through this uh, procedure once so that you get a better idea how to perform this experiment. I will explain this one by one. So I'm not going to discuss procedure here. But you can go through this procedure also. So you get idea how to do this experiment. Then uh, I will click on simulation. So how to perform this experiment here? To perform this experiment, you have to click on simulation. So objective of, of our experiment is to study the mechanical properties of mild steel specimen under a tension load. Apparatus is used here is UTM, then direct indicators, extensometer, scale and vernier calipers. So we are going to simulate our UTM, uh, our experiment using UTM by using this virtual lab. For this, just click on this arrow. Once you click on this arrow, your first step is measure the initial diameter of the tension test sample in two perpendicular directions using vernier calipers. So we have to use this vernier caliper to calculate diameter of this rod. So just click here. Automatically, it will calculate diameter. It is dix is equal to 12.62. And then second thing, we will perform again second diameter. So another diameter is 12.62 again. So I, it is a uniform diameter, having same diameter. Hence, average diameter of this specimen is 12.62. And remember, whatever readings you are taken, you have to note down on a separate page. For examination also, you have to note down this readings. So diameter we obtain is 12.62 mm. So this is your first step that is you have to calculate dimension of the specimen. The dimension is a diameter. In second step, you have to measure length of the specimen. So just click here, you can see this arrow is telling us how to perform this practical. So you can click here. So that it will calculate length of the specimen.
So you can see here the length is 194 mm. So we calculate diameter in second step using a scale, we calculate length. This already this all steps we done using UTM also. Now second here, we need to punch marks are made at a distance of 2.5 times diameter. So we have to mark some uh, punches here to calculate or to identify gauge length. So we are going to mark these punches here on the gauge main, gauge length. So to mark that punch, first we, we have to click here. You can see this is just first punch is marked. Then for second punch, again we have to click here. And we have to repeat this. So that all punches are marked. I'm just clicking here once the first step is over. Likewise, you can see here uh, five punches are marked on a gauge gun at a distance of 2.5 times diameter. Now our specimen is uh, marked here to identify necking. Next step is I click here. Now you can see this one is a UTM. And so we have to insert our specimen into its position and mount extensometer on this specimen. For this, we need to click here. So this is cross head travel. Now we have to drag the specimen to fit in this UTM. So I'm going to drag the specimen here. Just we have to drag it, automatically it will fix that specimen. And then again you have to click here so that it will clamp the specimen in UTM. You can see the extensometers are attached here. These extensometers are used to calculate change in length. Once a specimen is attached here and extensometers are fixed, then you have to click on next step. So this will be your next step. Now uh, we have to calculate readings on the dials A and B of extensometer. And for this, I have to click here. We have to adjust it to zero. So I'm just clicking on this. So now it adjusts to zero. And second also, I have to adjust to zero. So click it here. As you can see here, both extensometer readings are adjusted to zero. And least count of this extensometer is 0.01 mm. So just we calculated uh, list count of extensometer and we adjusted its uh, dial radius to zero. Now, next step, once extensometer is mounted, it is adjusted to zero, we have to conduct experiment. So we have to apply load using this uh, UTM machine and then we have to calculate change in length using extensometer. So experiment is conducted here. Load extensometer readings are read at a regular intervals of load up to the yield point. And here ivory scale reading are noted till the specimen failure. So just to start the experiment, you have to click on this green button. You can see this. I'm just going to click it here on this green button. Once it is clicked, now the load is it started applied. You can see this it is moving. This load is gradually applied, and you can see this readings. That means load is varying. And once load is varying, you can see the specimen also. It is going to break. Making is formed here. Load is increasing at certain load, it breaks. So load goes on increasing from value of 2.5 to you can see first it goes on increasing and then again decreases. And these are the extensometer average readings. That is, there are we have two extensometers A and B, and its average is here. Okay. Now we already uh, done with our experiment. We apply load and say this specimen breaks at certain load. You can download this data. Just click on download. After that, we have to stop our uh, experiment. Just click on this red button. Okay. Our experiment is connected. Data is with us. So we can, from the readings obtained, already downloaded data, we can plot this graph. This graph already, uh, we can see this graph. So we can see different points here. That is proportional limit, the elastic limit, upper read point, lower read point, ultimate, ultimate load, and breaking load. So we can no note this. Loads, we can also see this view, we can view this data. So how much load is applied, and how much extensometer reading is. Okay, you can see also load versus extensometer reading, that is how much load applied with respect to that, how much extensometer reading in divisions. You can see also slope of this experiment, the delta y by delta x. It is given here, delta x is 4, delta y is 8.78, slope is 2.19. Okay, then you can click on next step. You can see this specimen is break now. 
So we have to join these two pieces of test sample and measure the diameter at the neck of the specimen. As it is neck is formed here, we are going to calculate change in diameter after failure. And for this purpose, just click here. And we can we are going to calculate now this diameter at the necking or at the failure region. Just click here. So using vernier, the diameter is 7.5 mm. Again, we have to calculate final length. So just click here. Final length is 86 mm. Here we have to put some values at the yield space. You can check here, just uh, you have to put these values based on calculations. So here yield stress is yield point upon AO. Now already we noted that readings, that is how much original area is, how much yield point load is. Okay, all these values we have to paste here. So I'm just going to calculate it uh, with readings I have. So yield stress is load upon area. We already noted the reading that value with me is, it is three zero, 6.2. This value I calculated. How I calculate this? Load at yield point upon original area. You have to calculate load at yield point based on graph and original area. Area is nothing but pi by 4 into DO square. Already we know DO. So based on DO, we can, we can calculate AO. And from graph, we can calculate yield load. Then tensile strength. You know, tensile strength is nothing but ultimate load upon original area. Once you know original area from diameter, then from graph, we have to calculate yield load, ultimate load. And from that, we get yield stress and tensile strength. So, value I calculated is here is 460.9. Remember, it may vary because we have to calculate these values from graph. Now, modulus of elasticity, we know that so modulus of elasticity is nothing but, yes, it is stress upon strain, strain from graph. So, it is slope into 1 upon LC into gauge length upon AO. And here, the elasticity value is what I obtain is, I am putting direct values here. 211. Well, percentage elongation is change in length minus uh, final length minus uh, final length minus initial length upon original length. Okay, that is 38. And percentage reduction is change in area upon original area. That is 64.25. Remember these values I obtained from graph and diameter calculated. You may get different values. Okay. So based on this, remember, once I put this value, you can check your observation also. These are your values. Okay. These are your initial diameter, length of the space, and that already be calculated one by one. One by one. So original area is 125. Final area is 44. List count is 0 0.01. Gauge length is 120. Final length is 86. Punch mark at 31.25 uh, mm distance. And initial diameter is 12.62. Like this, we have observations. Then we have graph also. From this graph, I calculated yield point, yield load. Okay. Then here ultimate load and here failure load. And these values are used to calculate our this dimension. That is your yield stress, tensile strength, modulus of elasticity, percentage elongation, percentage reduction. Finally, we can check whether our uh, whether whatever we done is right or not. For this, just click here. So you can check here now. The values I enter here is 306, but actual value is 298. This may happen because my yield value, I have not taken exact value, it may have some error. So minus 2 point error is there, minus 7 point, minus 0 0.15, minus 1, 2.93. So if you put exact readings, your error will be 0. So that's what we can, how we can check your entered value, that is you perform using experiment with your actual values. So likewise, you can perform any experiment using virtual lab. So this is first experiment I explained. Similarly, you can perform other also. I'll just show you one more here. So let's say go for direct shear test on mild steel. So our aim is to determine experimentally the ultimate shear strength in double shear of mild steel. Already we done this experiment using UTM. Now, so let's say go on simulation. This is your UTM machine and you know how we can fix our specimen for a shear test. We can perform double shear or we can perform single shear based on dyes we use. So here again, objective is to determine 
experimentally the ultimate shear strength in double shear of mild steel rod apparatus used of course is utm and shear attachments this one is attachment used and vernier calipers to measure the lanes and diameters so just click here to get next step here i have to calculate diameter of this specimen remember whatever readings you are taking here you have to note down separately so that it will help help you for calculation purpose just click on here to calculate the diameter so first trial diameter is 5.95 mm we have to note down this readings 5.95 then it will take two tries so here now my steel rod is placed in the shear attachment and placed into the universal testing machine so i just have to click here this is your shear attachment you are going to put it here in utm you can see this broad view here and click here now here we have to apply load using utm so that when when you apply this load here this is going to break due to shearing so just click here on this button so that this load is applied you can check now once i apply the load this dial gauge will move it shows that load is applied gradually you can see it is moving means load is applying and once it is moving this is specimen is break into two spaces once it is uh, break down you can see failure load here is 1450 kg so in the first test when diameter was 5.95 the load applied at failure was 1450 kg you can stop this and go for next step this was trial 1 so here we calculated double shear strength and we know how to calculate it so the diameter is known area of cross section is known failure load is known then double shear strength is equal to load into 9.8 because it is in kg upon twice area so double shear strength obtained here is 255.93 if it is single shear then it is 250 uh, it is a half of this so likewise we can perform any experiment out of the six using virtual lab already we did this same experiment in utm just we need to simulate it using virtual lab 